Shalom, shalom, brothers and sisters. It's Pastor Tim, and today we are going to talk about the New World Order. First, let's pray. Father, I ask that you bless this message, and it goes forward. It's for your glory and our good. Holy Spirit, illuminate the truth of your word, and we thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, first, the gospel, because as I go through, it is imperative for someone who may be viewing who has never heard the gospel or for those who may be confused to understand the foundation, the plumb line, the gospel. It is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 to 4. Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and on the third day rose from the dead. We believe in the eternally self-existing God in the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We believe that God, the Son, the Son of God, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Messiah, left glory, laid down his glory, was born of a virgin, wrapped in flesh, lived a perfect life, never sinned, and shed his precious blood to pay the debt for our sins, once and for all, past, present, and future sins. He died, was buried, conquered hell, death, and the grave, and on the third day rose from the dead. The nanosecond, the instant you believe in him, you are born again, indwelt with Holy Ghost, saved, sealed, and sanctified until the day of redemption. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Have you believed on the Lord Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection? If you have, you are born again. It's a done deal, heaven bound, and rapture ready. Well, we want to talk about, before I get into the New World Order, I want to talk about, from a biblical perspective, what is going to happen prophetically as we are at the end of this dispensation, this church age, um, this 6,000 year period? I just want to recap what is about to happen. I believe that the rapture is imminent any moment. And from <clears throat> the word of God, we know that the rapture will be before the tribulation period. So, we have the rapture of the church. I believe right then is when we go, because this is for all believers. The nanosecond you believe. Done deal. You are heaven bound and rapture ready. So we, we are raptured, the beam of seat. We go to the wedding to the bridegroom and the bride, the church, the body of Christ, everyone, Jews or Gentiles, who have believed. 1 Corinthians 10.32 tells us, give no offense neither to the Jew nor the Gentile nor the ecclesia, the church, the assembly, the called out ones. So everyone, Jew or Gentile, who has believed on the Lord Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection, is this new people group. We are the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. So for the seven-year tribulation period going on here, also known as the time of Jacob's trouble, we get raptured up before and we go to the wedding. And after that seven-year period, that seven days of years, we come out and we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I believe right after we're raptured, we go before the Bema seat, I've shared the visions I've had, the dreams I've had on that. You can go back and look at that. Well, what we are seeing, because when you come to the end of a dispensation, it's not like you step over a log and boom, you're in the new one. We are seeing a transitionary period and we are seeing this beast system, this antichrist system, the precursor and the formulation of it right before our very eyes. In fact, we're seeing prophecies align according to the word of God 
that the prophets declare 25 to 2,800 years ago align before our very eyes. It, it, it's amazing. It would take more faith not to believe the word of God than to believe the word of God. And I want to talk a little bit about this new world order. This is not just a now or a current event now. The objective of the new world order has actually been around since Genesis, and its primary objective is to rebel against the eternally self-existing God in the persons of Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Its origin can be found in Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 9, and we're going to go there right now. So if you have your Bibles, join me. I'm reading this passage from the King James Version. So Genesis chapter 11, verses 1 to 9. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to... Let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build it. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. So they were in unity, and the Lord saying that there's nothing they can't do that they imagine to do. There's power in unity, good and bad. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So here we've read that in the plain of Shinar, Nimrod the leader, by the way, whose name in Hebrew means revolt, he was known as a murderer of innocent men and, re and a rebel against God. The word Babel means confusion, and the Bible says that God is not the author of confusion, and Babel is known as the city of Babylon. The great historian Josephus said of Nimrod, he gradually changed the government into tyranny and turned men from the fear of God and brought men into constant dependence on Nimrod's power. Boy, sounds like the world system today, doesn't it? Well, clearly nothing has changed. This pandemic has politicized control and it's gotten the focus off of God. It is the Antichrist system being played out in front of our very eyes. Some states still are controlled by corrupt leaders and politicians who have violated the Constitution of the United States. Control of life when you can or can't leave your home. When you can or can't go to work, can or can't go to school. You must social distance. You must wear a mask. And now many are saying, even after being vaccinated, which I will never do, that you, need, you should wear two masks. We are being socially conditioned, and this is part of this new world order. I don't know how many of you have seen the video um, on Rep. Jordan and 
questioning Dr. Anthony Fauci, and many in the media are bashing Congressman Jordan, but he did nothing wrong. He was asking direct questions that Fauci would not answer. Come on, in states where they had the most restrictions, they have the highest cases. Talk about herd immunity. Anyway, I've, I've shared many times on this. Nimrod married a woman named uh, Samarmus. I don't know if I'm saying her name correctly, but he declared himself, she declared, he declared himself to be king. And he declared his wife, Samarmus, queen of Babylon and the high priestess. At Babel, in Genesis 11, is introduced the first organized and idolatrous religious system in the history of the world. And that same system, the Babylonian system, survived and is alive and well today. Samarmus knew enough of the history and revelation as we read in the Word of God to know that the seed of woman would bring blessings to the world. And that prophecy is found in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. So Samarmus had a son and named him Tamas and claimed that her son was divine and the divine fulfillment of Genesis 3.15, which we know is not true. She made herself and her son the object of worship and the symbol of this false religious system was called the mother-child cult, with the mother holding the child in her arms. The cult spread to Phoenicia and then to Pergamos and then into Asia Minor, and we find it in Revelation chapter 2, verses 12 to 13. It says, To the angel of the church in Pergamum, write, He who has the sharp two-edged sword says these things. I know your works and where you live, where Satan's throne is. Yet you hold firmly to my name and did not deny my faith even in the days of Antipas, my faithful martyr, who was killed among you where Satan dwells. So Pergamos, or Pergamon, is the place of Satan's throne. Satan lives there because the mother-child was there. From Pergamos, it went to Rome. We are on this earth to be salt and light. Salt disrupts corruption because it irritates. Light disrupts darkness. Satan is the prince of darkness. Socialism, Marxism, the Antichrist beast system, the globalists, the deep state, the new world order is darkness. We believers are the truth to the nations that is under an illegit and this nation that is under the United States of America that is under an illegitimate leadership. The church has the message. Jesus, the source of hope and hope to the hopeless. The Word of God and the Church of Jesus Christ brings hope and is the source of confidence. We are His ambassadors here on the earth. When we look at the administration that is in power right now, and I'm talking about the United States of America, we have brothers and sisters who will be watching from around the world, but when we look at this illegitimate administration, this man, Joe Biden, said in his campaigning, I will make abortion the law of the land. It is wicked. It is vile. It is wrong. The border crisis and human trafficking. Don't think for one minute that the globalists are not in on the money, the billions being made by the cartels, the trafficking of innocent children 
and women, the, the legal arms and the drugs that are coming into our nation, the diseases, the despair that is crossing our borders. And we pray for the people, but we call, call it what it is. This administration is anti-Christ and anti-Israel. Samarmis set herself up as the only approach to God. Yes, she did. This is what we understand from history. And again, uh, the great historian Josephus has given us much to learn about Samarmis and Nimrod and what was going on in that time with the biblical account. She adopted the title of the Queen of Heaven and taught that salvation came through her by the means of sprinkling of water and ceremonial cleansing. Does that sound like a religious system? Absolutely. There was a purgatorial cleansing after death. Well, that's where the Roman Catholic Church gets the concept of purgatory. There is no purgatory. She created Temple Virgin, and I'm going to say this. I believe the Pope, this Pope, Francis, is the false prophet of Revelation. I've said that many times. I absolutely believe it. He is the same man who is helping form this one world religion, says that Jesus Christ sinned and was a failure at the cross. God, have mercy on him and those who follow him. Samarmus adopted the title of the Queen of Heaven and taught that salvation came through her by the means of sprinkling, I know I'm repeating this, of water and ceremonial cleansing. She taught there was a purgatorial cleansing after death. She created temple virgins, now listen to this, that are now known as nuns to pray for her son that, who was allegedly killed by a wild beast. They were to fast for 40 days and at the end of those 40 days, they would celebrate the feast of Ishtar. Now, I'm going to say this. Many know that and, and teach that that is what has become known as Easter. I refer to that period of time as Resurrection Sunday. But I want to say this. Stop getting bound up in legalism. What many of our brothers and sisters celebrate is the resurrection of Christ. They have no ties to this evil. But I'm teaching this so that you know because it gives us the historical background and so that we can see how it's building to where we are today in the final moments of the end of days. So we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his victory over hell, death, and the grave. Hallelujah. And because he lives and we have believed on him, his death, burial, and resurrection, we also shall live. He and he alone is the resurrection and the life. If you have not done so, believe on him today. Well, this mother-child cult spread even to Israel when the king of Israel, Ahab, married Jezebel, who had been raised in the mother-child cult. Jezebel, immediately, when she married Ahab, started putting the prophets of God in prisons in caves. Why? Because a New World Order system, a globalist agenda, antichrist agenda, a dictatorship cannot stand a Bible-preaching ministry. Soon after Israel started worshiping the false god Baal and Asherah. Think about this. Jezebel was actually leading the people back to what God called Abram out of, a society that worshipped the mother-child call. Abraham's father actually kept his household idols till the day he died. Joshua 24, 2 says, And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago, your fathers lived beyond the Euphrates, Terah, the father of Abraham, and of Nahor, and they served other gods. Genesis 12, 1 says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Why did God command this of Abram? Because there needs to be a separation 
of light and darkness. And I'm going to say this again. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And there are many believers who are duped and deluded. That does not mean they're born again. So I want, as I go along, I often find that I need to clarify that as the Lord encourages me to. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. And I, later I'll be sharing a, a verse on that. But here's the question. Now that you're born again, you already are. You can't be born again again. It's a done deal. Check out Ephesians 4.30 and Ephesians 1.13 and 14. You are sealed by Holy Ghost until the day of redemption. What are you willing to walk away from? You're already born again. But what are you willing to walk away from? Because depending on what you're willing to walk away from as a believer could determine what God can bring you to. And I don't know about you, but I want all that God has. I want to fulfill the ministry, the anointing, the destiny that he has. And he has a ministry for each and every one of us, a purpose and a plan. 2 Corinthians six fourteen to 17 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God, you know, the nanosecond you believe, the instant you believe on Jesus, he's Messiah, the Christ, and his resurrection, you are born again. And you are indwelt with Holy Spirit. So you are the temple of God. So what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. This is God's command to the church. Not for our salvation, but we want to honor God, our reasonable service. We are not trying to be like the world. And I've shared this week, pastors endorsing abortions, being silent while wickedness and evil is being called good. It is time to rise up. Not only pray, yes, pray, and take our authority as believers, but be bold in declaring the gospel and standing for truth. Jeremiah 44, 5 to 6. But they hearken not, nor incline their ear to turn from their wickedness, to burn no incense unto other gods. Wherefore my fury and mine anger was poured forth, and was kindled in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem, and they are wasted and desolate as at this day. They worship the mother child cult. God says, Have no other gods before me. In Ezekiel chapter 8, we see the Jewish people in the temple who worship idols to the Queen of Heaven. God sent the prophet Ezekiel to the temple to peek through a hole in the wall to see the people in the temple praying to the queen of heaven, which is the Babylonian cult of Nimrod and Samarmus. The people continued to worship the mother-child cult, which is today, even today, alive and active and a global religion. The Bible tells us there is one mediator between God and man. It is the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the King of kings and Lord of lords, and was crucified for you and I, died, buried, and rose again. Hallelujah. Philippians 2.9, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Jesus' name, Yeshua, is above every name. About kings, presidents, dictators, and religious leaders and hierarchies. 
that are made by men. And one day, the Bible tells us that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. That's praiseworthy. Brothers and sisters, there is no queen of heaven. Then we see the New World Order agenda rise again when Satan came to Jesus and said, if you will fall down and worship me, I will give you the kingdoms of this world. And they were Satan's to give. Not only is he the prince of darkness, having been kicked out of heaven, but by high treason, Adam turned over the rule and reign, the lease, and gave up his lease for 6,000 years. And praise God, we are at the end of this dispensation, this period of time. And Satan knows it. He knows his time is short. But God, but the cross. The church is not to bow down to this world system and evil agenda and such authority of this world that goes against our God. I know the scriptures about obeying authority, but not when they go against our God. What did Peter and John say? When the religious leaders, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, governing, they was not only just religious, they had authority. And when they said, you can teach because the people were following, they were now full of the Holy Ghost and power. And, I mean, Peter, who denied Jesus, baptized in the Holy Ghost, preached, and 3,000 got saved, believed on the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. And Peter and John said, because they said to them, we, you can teach in the synagogues, but don't you dare, I'm giving you my translation, my paraphrase, don't you dare teach in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. Don't you teach in the name of Jesus. And Peter and John said, we will obey God rather than men. It is now time for the leaders and the church to rise up and say no more. We're not part of this world system. Socialism, Marxism, globalism, the deep state, new world order, beast system, Babylonian system, antichrist agenda is alive and well and attacking the church and the church must rise. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 14 to 16, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bush, bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. It's not a requirement unto salvation because we're already saved. But we want to because we want to honor God. Because we are saved. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. And then I'm going to add 10. For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works lest any man should boast. We cannot boast. Because it's all based on the meritorious work of Jesus Christ. His precious blood shed. Paying our sin debt. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says. For God made him Jesus who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. He did it all. That's why we call it the free gift of salvation. Judgment would be getting what we deserve. Mercy is not getting what we deserve. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. God's unmerited favor. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Believe on the Lord Jesus today, if you have not done so. Then verse 10 says, we're saved now. By, we're saved grace alone, by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Solo fide. Faith plus nothing equals salvation and eternal security. And that gospel never gets old. Then verse 10 says, For we now as believers, for we are created in his workmanship unto good works, which he prepared or preordained beforehand. And we want to do that. If Satan has authority in the kingdom of darkness 
and you as a believer start quoting the word of God, you are the light of the world. Darkness cannot stand light. Darkness runs when light is turned on. If I blacked out this room pitch black and lit one little candle, the darkness would dissipate. Imagine when we all let our, right, that, that song that we sang as children, many of us, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm going to let it shine. So stop whining and complaining about the darkness and turn on the light. Hallelujah. So then we move on in history. There's so many times that we could, but the time doesn't permit me to cover every detail of, of the New World Order through the ages. Out of Europe came the Illuminati, and Illuminati means, means enlightened ones. They were a group of international power brokers, a secret, a super secret society in Europe, and they had as their goal, what do you think? A new world order. Their leadership consisted of Satanists and atheists. Not surprising, these followers of the Prince of Darkness thought of themselves as the sort of light. You know, several years ago, there was a woman who really believed that the angel of light was speaking to her. And what she was conveying was anti the word of God. I'm going to tell you right now, if you have any entity speaking to you, and it is contrary to the word of God, it is coming from the darkness. Satan, the Bible tells us, uh, in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. And I explained to this woman, but she would not believe the truth. Then, a couple years later, I got a call. Things were happening spiritually, the depression, the dementia. Prayed for her, she got delivered and got saved, praise God. But it took that enemy turning on her for her to actually see the light and be washed in the purity of the truth of God's word. Well, this Illuminati wanted to kick God out of society, just like the deep state globalists, American socialists, want to kick God out of America. Secular humanists mock the God of heaven and they control our educational system in the United States of America. After World War I, President Woodrow Wilson produced the League of Nations, which we know later now we have the United Nations. I'm going to get to that. Then came Adolf Hitler with the Third Reich. And Hitler promised the German people that he would bring Europe a new order that would last a thousand years, promising peace and prosperity. A better life. Hitler's, that's what he promised, a better life. Hitler's SS Corps were a cultist and Satanist wanting to cast God out of German society. Pastors in Germany at that time who disagreed were put into prison, and we know the horrors of the Holocaust and Hitler responsible for the murder of six million Jews. The Nazi salute was a sign of worship to a man and not the God of heaven. Hitler was their self-appointed Messiah. Today, the UN wants a new world order. In fact, leaders like Prime Minister Boris Johnson in the UK has been calling for a new world order. Bush Sr., former President Bush Sr., in 1991 declared there was a new world order. And I'll tell you what, since 1991, have we seen that being established? You have the false prophet, the Pope, Declaring we need a new world order. And in fact, he has pointed to and given the nod to President of France, Emmanuel Macron. I'm not saying he will be the Antichrist. I do believe uh, if you want to look at contenders, I think the man could be a good contender. But I'm not saying that. And we're looking for Christ to come, not the Antichrist as believers. Brock Chisholm. 
the director of the United Nations World Health Organization. This is what he said. This is recent. Needs to be done to achieve world government. It is necessary to remove from the minds of men, one, their individualism, <laughs> so remove that, two, loyalty to their families, three, remove national patriotism and religion to cast God out. The UN is in fact a modern day Tower of Babel. I'll tell you what, I have been saying this for years, kick them out of New York City, out of America, and stop funding this evil Babylonian system. There is going to be all out New World Order, and it is soon. From the Tower of Babel to the UN to the godless and Congress who worship the deep state, who are trying right now to kick God out of every aspect of our lives. I'll tell you what. The cup of iniquity, I believe, is almost full. God will give the word, and Jesus will snatch his bride. The rapture of the church. The word is harpazo. It means caught up. It's in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 to 18. 1 Corinthians 50, uh, 15, 50 to 53, and other places. The Lord himself shall descend with a shout. With the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then those of us who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. And so shall we be with the Lord forever. And we're told to encourage one another with that truth. Hallelujah. The bridegroom cometh. God will give the word. Jesus will snatch his bride. Then God will allow Hasatan, the accuser of the brethren, to set up his false messiah, the Antichrist, on the earth. And he will make Hitler look like a choir boy. He will make you, not us, not believers, we're out of here, hallelujah. But he will make those here take his sign in their hand or forehead. And the precursor is here. We're seeing it in the social conditioning. And you do this, if you don't take this, if you don't do this, you won't be able to transact business and buy and sell. We are seeing the precursor, the system. I believe it's the trial period, the precursor. And it is here globally right now. The Antichrist will slaughter a fourth of the earth's population and is going to produce seven years of hell on earth. Revelation 13, 7. It was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. I want to tell you a couple things that the Lord has shown me. You know, God deals with people in specific ways. It aligns with the word of God. I, well, one, with the rapture. As they come down, we go up. I've never known what they are. But I will tell you, God is love. His love is perfect, fierce, and passionate. The Lord has shown me. His wrath is equally perfect, fierce, and passionate. You do not want to be here. And even love is the foundation of those judgments that are coming. People will be saved. It is the time of Jacob's trouble. God is going to deal with the nation of Israel, the people as a whole, and there will be those left behind who will get saved during that time. That's why it's so important that not only we share the gospel now, but we tell them and sound the alarm so that they'll know, they'll recognize, because many are going to be duped and deluded and what they will have to live through. Who You don't want to believe on the Lord Jesus. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. It will be, this world will be under his control. The Antichrist is going to have complete authority over this world. 
The church, the body of Christ, is leaving this earth, and it is imminent. We are out of here, praise God. I want to talk about one other thing before I give you the blessing, and I pray that you're blessed by this. Um, as we go along, I'm, I, there's going to be times of prophetic updates. I, I also, I didn't tell you this, this is something the Lord showed me again today. Um, I, I saw it, and it's like I was there. It's real. I know I'm not there, and I won't be there. I saw across America, and I'm talking, this is post the rapture, so do not fear. But I saw, all right, America was toast. I mean, literally, there was fire all over the place. And I saw paratroopers from China and Russia coming down into our land. That's what the Lord showed me. Many people won't get all, oh, and that was post the rapture, brothers and sisters. So praise God. Now, until he comes, we occupy and redeem the time. But I do want to talk about this. So, you know, it's interesting. Uh, someone I know, and you, you have to live, you have to plan, right? I, I was speaking with Rachel Rishi. I love Rachel and Travis and, and the moderators and uh, Rachel and I were talking this morning about how things are coming and, you know, we were talking about plans and, and continuing ministering and sharing the gospel. Uh, great news is Tim Henderson TV is now also, not only are we on YouTube and all the glory to God, it's only in my name because I don't have to legally then, I will not be a not-for-profit and I don't have to worry about, by using my own name, I'm permitted legally to do that. So just keep that in mind. I'm not one to put my name on things, but in this case, it is safe legally to do so. So we're on YouTube, we're on Patreon, we're on Lightcast, a web uh, web page, we are on Cross.tv, we're on Roku, we are on Amazon Fire, and now we are we have an app an Android app that you can get on your phones, on your Android devices. And the last one that we're working on is the Apple app. So you'll be able to go to Apple Store and get it onto your device. And it's free of charge, praise God. So we appreciate those who support because there are costs to us. But I wanted to share that with you guys. And Rachel and I were talking about planning and we were laughing and she was telling me, you know, if we had stopped planning and living and serving, then two years ago she would have stopped. And I said, honestly, based on what I saw, probably if that were the case in 2015, I would have stopped six years ago. We occupy and redeem the time. But I will tell you, we are in the perfect storm right now for the rapture of the church. Until we're caught up or we breathe our last, we occupy and redeem the time. And we want to be the glorious church, going from glory to glory to glory to our ultimate glorification. Oh, in less than a nanosecond, we'll be caught up, and it is glorious. But I want to talk about what's going on, not only globally, but in the United States of America. We are about to see. So I was sharing with uh, someone recently that's looking to purchase a home. I said, you better do it quick, because you are about to see, I firmly believe, this is not of us, saith the Lord, but I believe from history and my understanding and studies that we are going to see interest rates go up. You are going to see hyperinflation like the world, like we have not seen before. We're about to see it. Even the trillions that are being spent, the dependence on government, this is what they're doing. So now, if you have not heard, it's come out. There is new stimulus. So, and I think I've got this right, for married couples that earn less than $150,000 a year, and they have dependent children from day of birth to 17 years old, six and under, from July through December, they will get $300 a month per however many children they have as part of the stimulus the IRS now reports. If your child is between the ages of 6 and 17, you will get 250 a month if you're under that 150 and if single if you're under 75,000 a year. 
where this is all leading is we're going to have hyperinflation and it's all leading to this new world order and the dependence on government so that when it all crashes, the Antichrist will be able to come in and the entire world will be forced to come under one monetary system and one way of transacting and get, and the Bible's very clear. It's unbelievable what it will cost someone at that time for a loaf of bread. Well, I'm just thankful that as believers, we are out of here and we see where things are headed. I, I mean, prophecies jumping off the pages of the Bible. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is coming for his bride soon. Until then, we should be the people with the most joy. We want our lights to shine and share the gospel. You know, it was a couple years ago now that the Lord spoke to me. I'm already born again. This doesn't save me. It's not a requirement for me to stay saved. I'm born again. Hallelujah. It's a done deal. I am heaven bound and rapture ready. But the Lord said to me, remain humble. Be obedient. Carry no offense. Be quick to forgive. And everything we do, do in the love of God. And while we rise up and we call evil evil and we give voice to the helpless and the weak, we want to do everything we do boldly and remain in his love. Remember, even the perpetrators, God loves, and he would that all would be saved. We know they won't. And so I want to encourage you today. I want to remind you that God loves you fiercely and passionately. I love you too. When it starts to become overwhelming, and I know the spiritual attacks are great, remember, greater is he who's in you than he who's in the world. And the Bible says, as a believer, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead abides in you. That means you have resurrection power in you, and you can do all things through Christ, which strengthens you. I want you to know you are prayed for, you are loved, and that trump is going to sound soon. And so, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May his countenance be lifted on you and his shalom, his peace, perfect, whole, complete, nothing lacking, nothing missing, be yours in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus Messiah, I pray and I bless you. Shalom, shalom, and have an awesome rest of your day.